Okay. Now, the second one is fabrication. Fabrication is faking. You, are, you, you can fake things that you have not done and then that generate a paper. And the most well-known case, I, unbelievably, the most well-known case is this case. It's to paint the white lines in black. Okay, Dr. William Somerlin is a dermatologist. He was studying his uh, tissue uh, incompatibility problem. Together with his supervisor, Dr. Good, very good. Okay. So then he run some experiment, and then you know, crossing the. I, I don't know exactly how he how he run the experiment. You can check it out. But at the very end, he produced mice. He used ink to paint the mice. To use ink to paint the mice into this kind of way, and get caught. Because the technician one time was, uh, was somehow put a drop of water, accidentally put a drop of water on the mice, and then the, the thing just fall out. <laughs> the, the color just fall out. So those, those are fabrication. You have not done anything, but you just produce it. Okay, so that, 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 that's another kind of thing. So fabrication, okay, and then previous plagiarism. And then the third category is what we're going to talk about for most of the time today. That is falsification. That you doctor your data. You massage your data. These are American way of saying you doctor it. You massage it. Okay, to make it look better, look more convincing, to make it believable. So this problem is so prevalent nowadays. In 2004, Journal of Cell Biology put out a guideline that for image uh, manipulation and then tell the authors what you can do and cannot do. Okay, so I really encourage you, all of you, to read this paper, 2004 uh, uh, Journal of Cell Biology paper. Now, so let me take out from that paper and from some, some other sources to tell you what you should not be doing. The first one is gross manipulation of data. For example, here. So you have you have it, original data looks like this. Then you have you have the data that get put on the, the, the paper looks like this. Can you see the differences? Okay, so you know that's a no no. But if you become a PhD of, what I say, PhD of Photoshop, <laughs> doctor of Photoshop, you can produce data like this, okay? Now, so here, there's another way of you can, you can massage the data. That is to adjust the contrast and brightness of the data. And then so you, you have excessive manipulation. So, we have four panels here. Can you tell me which panels or panels are acceptable and which are not? What do you think? So these two are okay because the details are kept. The third panel, no, no. You have adjust the contrast the brightness too much to obscure some of the data, okay? This paint disappeared, for example. That you cannot do. And worse, some people just cut it out of band, cut it out of lane, and then really, really like adjust the brightness and contrast, and then just show that there's only one band right there. Okay, so that is a definite no-no. So the guideline is that if you have an ordinary gram or you have a Western result, you can adjust the brightness and contrast in total, the entire image. You cannot focus on one area, adjust the, the brightness and contrast. And in fact, some of the journal now demanded you to describe how you handle your image. Exactly how you adjust it, they want it. And some journals, in many journals now, they want you to scan your original, original data. For example, if you put out something like this, they want to see the whole blog. You should put them into supplemental material. Okay? And there's another, other cases, duplicated control. 
some of us are too lazy to run the control many times. Once upon a time, I have a graduate students, and then before I, we want to send out a paper to Ambo Journal, and I, we were reviewing all the data, and then she showed me this last one, one figure, and I found out there's no control on it. I said, you must do the control and have it down, the, uh, put it onto the, uh, this particular gel. And she argued with me, said, I have done it many times before. And they all look the same. So I don't have to put it in. I said, I said, no, you can't. I said, oh, how about that, Dr. Chang? Let me just cut out from the old experience control and then just attach them together. I said, no. I said, you have to do it on the same day using the same reagent, everything the same. If you stand on one feet, one foot, you do it on one foot. That is so-called control. Otherwise, it's not control. It has to be done exactly on the same day. You're using the same battle, same sets of reagents. That's control. So then she, she asked me the following way. Can we send out the paper and then I do it while I'm do, still doing the experiment? I said, no. She got very mad at me. So mad at me. She thought I was so stubborn. And I insist that, that she has to rerun the whole experiment, include the control. She did. And the paper got accepted at the very end. That's fine. So, but this is very important. You cannot duplicate the control. For example, here. See here, this is a beta actin loading control. Now everybody in the Ron Western knows about it, right? So then the author just took out this strip and then put it right here with the other sets of experiments. Do you think that's acceptable? It's not. It's not acceptable. The control has to be done on the same day, same gel, same reagent. So that's control. Now, and some people was lazy. They just say, oh, this, uh, this, this panel well, is similar to that panel. Oh, this experiment produced something. You just use it twice. That's not allowed. Duplication. OK? Now, here is a classical example how duplication was used to manipulate data. In 2009, Dr. Cato, the one that uh, retracted many, many papers before, a paper published a paper in Nature. So here is, is the one. Uh, the image. Five images are exactly the same. Exactly the same. And he, he just used it five times, OK? And then the worst is this is amazing. He, wrote, he assembled a figure like this. All these are from one experiment. When you really adjust the contrast and then brought it up, you see every band was right there, exactly the same. 16 panels came from one single image. And remember, this paper was published in Nature. Then you may argue with me, okay, we can certainly later argue, whether the reviewer bears the responsibility to catch this. I think it's very hard. To me, I myself, I would readily admit it's very, very hard. How can you know? And then when you are reviewing paper, you just don't get into that kind of details to, to review them. You trust them. Because science operates on trust. So then, so a lot of journals now begin to scan images before they even consider reviewing them. So you have to bear in mind, don't ever do that. Now there's another, an, another kind of this, that's a, that's a falsification, that is misrepresentation of a data like this. So you see, this is original data, this is the manipulated image. This one disappeared. These are enhanced. Beautiful. But not Right, you cannot do that. Okay, now the last category is what I call cherry picking, jail slicing and dicing. So this is, a, this is not a real data. I took it out from one of my postdoctoral data and I made this, this, this figure. Okay, no he didn't fake, I fake. Okay, so this is his original data, right, this. So I said, oh, I want my jail to eventually be presented in this way. So I cut and paste and then put them together and then look at how I cut and paste. Oh, okay. so I want these three lanes, I put it right here. And I take, I wanted these two lanes, I put it right there. And I want this, put it right here. And I want to, 
What is the problem? Because this actually is a set of experiments. I just took a randomly, took out two. I cherry pick. I pick what I want to see. Okay? And then I just move it around and then to assemble a logical sequence that looks very logical. That is not allowed. So what should you do? what should you be doing? If your data are okay, what should you be doing? Number one. Rerun the whole experiment as your final thing, image you want to show. Rerun them. Okay? And do the experiment several times, not just once, to, to make sure that is right. Alternatively, if you are just a little bit lazy, you don't want to rerun many times, you can cut out these things and put them together, but you have to put a line here. Put a line, clear line, or separate them to let people know that it does not come out from the same location or same jail. Okay, that must be done. Put a line, one here, one here, and one here. So the reviewer knows that came from different sources, different locations. But that's what you have to do. So uh, one of the recent allegations of misconduct was related to this in Taiwan. If you look into the original data, there was this cherry picking, cut and paste, okay? So that, that you shouldn't do. Now, so the falsification have another dimension. That is computational. Some of you may have been doing computational biology. And I always call it the get lost syndrome. Because when I, whenever I saw the computational data, I could not possibly understand how they did it. Should I believe them or should I not believe them? Because the code was not there. So some of the uh, computational scientists admitted to me, sometimes they download the code, they cannot run on their computer. So how can you believe that their data is correct? And they don't know if they have a whole set of data, consists of tens of thousands of data points, how do they massage the data to eliminate the outlier to make it look, look better? It was not described. So this is an issue. So in just recently, in 2016, in science, they came out with a policy forum paper or commentary called Enhancing Reproducibility for Computational Method. In this particular two pages uh, uh, policy paper, it clearly said the following thing. In the future, all the computational paper must describe in detail. These are just a portion of it. You can read it yourself. How can, we, how, how can you share the data so other people can use them, can double check them, okay? And uh, you have to share the software, and the software has to be able to run. Don't share a malfunctional uh, software. And then workflow, how did you do it? When you have a set of data, what is the first step you do? Second step you do, third data you do. What is the range that you use to eliminate the outlier? That has to be clearly defined. And, oh, sorry. So, then the, the detailed computational environment, what kind of computational system you use, that has to be described. So, bear in mind, those people who are doing computational biology, these things coming up. In the future, when you write paper, you have to document this. Okay, and so then, the, another issue of falsification is to deal with the numbers, statistics. So, an uh, Australian, uh, Scientists put out a, a, a paper called 10 Rules of Thumb for Statistical Presentation. So basically, in this uh, two pages uh, documents that uh, he suggests that, you must clearly indicate what kind of error bars you use in your figure, in the figure relation. So there are basically two types of error bars. Number one is descriptive error bars, such as standard deviation. If your error bar is standard deviation, you just say that that is standard deviation, SD. But many other people use a different type of standard, uh, different type of error bar called inferential error bar, standard error mean, or SE or SSEM, or confidence of interval. And this has to be clearly stated in your figure relation. And Dr. Vox suggests to review or to reject papers without clear documentation of what kind of error bars are. Okay. So these are falsification. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is the author's, co-author's responsibility. That's often linked to the scientific discount. So here is a word record. 
This is a paper published in the uh, Physical Review Letters, a very good journal in the Physical Review. That has 5,154 co-authors. And then if you just go into their pages, it's like, ah, like this, like this. The bottom line is that the author list consists of 24 pages. <laughs> the main text of the paper is only nine pages long. This is an issue I want to raise. I know that's an extreme issue, but you must have seen papers in nature, in science, consists of hundreds of authors, right? So this is a problematic. So what should the co-author be responsible? This is really a hotly debated area, okay? So what are the co-authors' responsibility? In, on one extreme, there is a recommendation by the ICM, ICMJE. International Committee of Medical Journal Editors, including journals of New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, and Lancet. You know these three are top medical journals. They recommend the following one. Everyone is equally responsible. Could that be applied to the previous paper? You can. You can. But they advocate everyone should be equally responsible because they think in medical sciences, this is very important. It could cost lives. Patients could die if you are a wrongly reported thing. So everyone should be responsible. But then, I, uh, this committee recommend the following. So who should deserve to be a corresponding author? Number one, only those people who have made substantial contribution. Substantial contribution. That is. They, they, they generate the original concept, experimental design, or data acquisition, and analysis or interpretation of the data. But they set the criteria very, very high. Because this is just one of them. And, they say and, the co-author co should fulfill not just this one, but and, next one. Drafting the work and critically revising of important intellectual content co-author should be involved in there. And third, they should also be involved in final approval of the revision to be published. Last one, they should agree to be accountable. Every one of them should be agreed to be accountable to all aspects of the paper. Now, I have to say that this is an extreme of definition of co-authorship. In the previous case, I mentioned the 5,000 co-authors, there is no way you're going to be able to do that. Because the, uh, because the modern science has emerged with the nature of multi-discipline, multi-national, multi-group collaboration. Sometimes you cannot possibly know what the other people are doing. And then to equally and carefully, critically assess how accurately or how precisely the data works. It is, I, I admit that this is a long debating problem, so the, I, I do not want to draw a conclusion. I let you draw the conclusion yourself. 